Alright, I'm going to work on the old Ford again today and uh, we'll show you what we're going to do. You know, you would think that the first step would be to put that uh, cross member in there, but uh, what I'm going to do is clean up the, the floor pan right here, get up all this, all this tar and stuff in here. Right here it's all glicky to have. Not only have tar there, but they got like a uh, bear bond or some kind of uh, sealant or something. So right here is going to be cleaned up and they're going to clean all the tar up here and uh, grind out uh, these sharp edges here so we don't get tore up too bad. And then we're going to fit the, the panel in. I'm not going to not going to weld it in, we're just going to fit it in. And that way, that won't be in the way. You know, if I got to get a, a grinder in somehow or something. So uh, that's what we're going to do now. We're just going to uh, get rid of all the tar so we have a place to weld. Alright, this might take me a while, so uh, maybe we'll see you guys after lunch. Alright, you guys still with me? It's been about uh, three hours, I think. And uh, I was able to get all the undercoating off here and, and all along here. All, all along here and everything, so. That's all ready. Yeah, I had a different uh, change of plans. You know, this here I was going to overlap because that's just the way the factory was. You know, it was spot welded on. So I'm going to uh, rosette weld that. And this side I was going to uh, butt butt weld it. But uh, if they're seeing the situation here, this this bar here is actually pretty flimsy. You know, I don't know if you can see how well it, how much it moves. So what I'm going to do is. I'm actually going to overlap it and put a bead along the back and then uh, spot weld in between here and even maybe maybe put a a piece of steel under here because these these bolt holes is what holds the, the the center console on there whatever you want to call that the cover you know and that cover is, it should, should have been bolted down because that that's what reinforces everything when you bolt it all together and tightens up but you know, there was only one or two bolts in that thing. Yeah, even while I was scraping this, you know, it was, it was just moving so much. I actually had to take a piece of steel, put it under there, and uh, clamp it up so it was rigid so I could work on it. And uh, I might do that. I might just put a piece of uh, steel under there and weld that in there so that thing is uh, better in factory. But anyway, that's where we're at. And back here... I decide I'm going to go right here and uh, spot weld that there. And up front, get a little little hole here I got to fix. And then that little hole here we know about. So uh, other than that, it's solid. You know, the rest of the truck is solid. Other than the other side that we got to fix. So uh, all right, like I say, all I did took it took me three hours just to clean all that tar off. So uh, I guess we can start cutting the the floor pan and uh, make it fit now. Alright, I'm gonna go have dinner. We'll see you guys tomorrow. Alright, it's later that evening that I just, I told you I'll see you tomorrow, but instead my buddy come over here, it's engine night, and uh, we're gonna take this tunnel off because somebody hacked it up and uh, since I got a, uh, my ace welder with me, we'll uh, try and fix that. I tried to get this uh, gear shift off earlier and I couldn't get that off to save my life. And then Daddy Dirtbike just tried, and he can't turn it off. There's no nut behind it, and uh, the numbers are straight. And uh, Little Dirtbike says some Fords uh, have uh, splines on them, but we looked at this one, and we think it has threads. But uh, I think somebody might have glued it on, because uh, we put everything we had behind it trying to get that off. So, so we should be able to get the, the tunnel off, but uh, not the boot. So see if you can get that off, buddy. Hey, buddy. Careful, don't scratch the paint. All right. All right, we'll see you guys inside. Well, you know what? I might have to straighten that before you uh, weld it, buddy. So maybe leave it out here. Okay. All right, I beat it back into shape here best I could. Once he starts welding it, I could do a little more beating on it, but uh, at least he can get started. All right, it's all you, buddy. All right, buddy.
And let me look at it, buddy. That's pretty good. I'm surprised we got that one as tight as we could. Uh huh. But the rest of them, the rest of them look great. Thank you, buddy. Yeah, this, they had this tight to heck. <laughs> <laughs> All right, go ahead. All right, let me finish up. All right, there you go. That's pretty good. That's 18 gauge of sheet metal there. And uh, you did that without blowing through anywhere. It's pretty good. All right, it's the next day, and uh, I just fit the floor pan in before I put the, the mount in under, underneath. That way, uh, once I put that in, it won't be in the way when I start messing with this. But uh, it didn't take much, and uh, I did have to put a little cut here and bend this piece up a little bit. And I elongated this hole about a sixteenth, and uh, it's fitting good because uh, I lined it up. I don't know if you see these. These are the gas tank or the, the gas pedal bolts, and that lines up perfect. I mean, absolutely perfect right down there. So that's good. And like I say, I elongated this a sixteenth, but this pan has like a belly in it. You guys can't see it, but it has a pretty big hump. Maybe you can see it back here. And uh, what I'll do is. When I start welding, I'll work back here, and then once I, I, I weld it to the, the floor brace, it'll take a lot of that out. But if I work that way and take that belly out this way, it'll actually bring this bolt to the center. I put that in there so I knew where the mount was. That's not the way it's going to gonna be sticking up like that. I just made it like that. And then uh, up against the wall here, it's going to meet nice, so uh, I am going to have to take a little little square of this rod out here, but I'm not going to fix that till after the until we're all done with that. And you can actually see the, the edge here. This is just the way things are made, you know, aftermarket, you know. You've got a pretty big gap there. But like I say, once I take that belly out, that'll close up a little bit. And here's the, the edge of the, the cab here, so the, that point comes right there. So, uh, it'll fit good. So, uh, let me get this out of the way, and then, uh, We'll start working on putting that uh, that cross member in that, that cab mount. I'm gonna have to uh, get my blocks here, and I think I might have to put a a jack under here, you know, a bottle jack, so I have better control over it. You know, I'm gonna have to lift this thing up at least at least an inch, maybe an inch and a half. So uh, let's get to it. All right. I'm trying to put that cab mount in there. I got it clamped in on the bottom. And I got this level here. I was just using this as a straight edge. I wasn't using it as a level. Funny thing is though, I don't know if you can see that, but it, it is level. I got the truck level for some reason. But anyway, that was just by chance. And it doesn't really mean anything. But anyway, this is where the bottom of the floor goes. So I put that there. And I put this in. And I don't know if you notice there, but that... I got the right one in here, right? This, this uh, cross mount belongs on the other side. And I'll tell you why, because... You see the way these these mount up to uh, right against the, the side of the, of the wall there? Well, I, I thought that maybe they made a mistake because the other one was fitting so bad. You see this? And, and make note of this. You see this little hole over here? That's, that's one side of the gas pedal. So I, I'm going to use that as a reference. And you can't see the, the mounts underneath here. But I have to push this way over. About three three inches there and and then that that almost lines up with that but then look at this gap you get here all right now that's like I say this belongs on the other side so I put it on there because this one fit almost the same way you know I had a uh, over over an inch gap and I was looking at them comparing them and this is the one we took out I mean, it's going to be easy to, to line them up. You know, you, you bolt one side, you, you clamp uh, one side here to the frame, and then you just center this, and that's where it's got to go, regardless. But uh, I notice on the original one here, it has this uh, right angle. You know, I guess that makes it a little stronger. And then it had this little gully here, and when I, had, when I was on a truck, I was wondering, you know, they don't do that for, any, for uh, no reason. And I couldn't figure out why, but when I put the new one on, I figured it out. There's a, a body rivet right in the center there, so this is almost going to sit on it. But these, 
Let me put this up here. I'm working with one hand here, so bear with me. All right, this this one here. This is the. There we go. It's the left hand one, and I guess it's I guess it's the right one that goes there because, like I say, it fits so bad. But that's uh, it's aftermarket parts, and uh, you you have to make them fit. And this one here is actually three inches shorter. Here's here's the end of the original, and here's the, where that one stops. So it's three inches shorter, which which really don't make a difference. But you see these these two little uh, titties sticking out here. That's where your gas pedal goes. You know, there's two bolts that hold the gas pedal in, and that's what I'm using as a reference. And that's an inch and a quarter off the front but once you get back here it may be a little different so that's what I was using for a reference but anyway let me take the other one off and I'll put this one back in and we'll show you how far off it is I think what I'm gonna have to do is is I'm gonna uh, cut the end here actually if you had to you could just bend that if you wanted to and, and uh, weld the side but I'm gonna plug weld it so what I'm gonna do is uh, I'm gonna wind up cutting that tab off and putting putting another one that inch but uh, let me let me put this one back in the truck and I'll show you my dilemma. Right. I got the left one on there and they're both flush now and uh, there's that hole and I put a little dot here where where it would be on the other one but for me to line this up I have to push this way over right about there you know and that leaves I'd say about uh, at least at least a, a half inch. So that's what we're gonna have to do. I, you know, I, I want that that hole to be center, and uh, the rest of it the rest of it isn't critical. So you know, that's just uh, that's aftermarket parts. You know, you, you're glad you have something to work with, but uh, you always have to do some kind of work to it. So all right, I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna. Uh, I'm gonna have to wrap up operations here because we got a looks like a bad storm coming in over the mountain there. They're saying it's gonna be bad weather, so I might have to pack it in for the day. Alright. You know maybe I can uh, maybe I'll mar I can mark that up. That's what I'll do. Before the storm, I'll uh, mark that up and put a piece of metal there and, and clamp it in and bring it inside and make one. Alright, I think that's what I'm gonna do. Alright. I come up with a little better solution. This, uh, the newer ones are wider than the, the originals. Not much, but they are wider. So I can cheat a little bit and move the front. Let me come over here and show you. On the other side, the other side was still uh, intact, so I could tell. But this, this piece here, I got mounted flush with the bottom right here. And that's the way it was on the other one, so I can move that forward a little bit and cheat, and that would help. Here's that, uh, here's that body uh, rivet I was telling you about. So, all right, yeah. If I if I cheat and move that up a little bit, then then I won't have to put this on so much of an angle. So, all right, I'm gonna try that. All right, we didn't make it. I had to pack it in. It's starting to rain pretty bad now. Alright, see you guys tomorrow. We're not in Kansas anymore, Toto. Alright, it's the next day. Nice and sunny. A little blustery, but a uh, beautiful day. Uh, let me show you what we did so far. Alright, I put the, the mount in and clamped it up front there, up here. And then I, I centered it over this bushing. That's uh, perfectly centered. Uh, I didn't I didn't uh, mark it yet. I got to crawl into the truck and mark it to to put a hole in here. But I have it clamped in place. Everything is clamped where it belongs. And uh, I even took a straight edge and put it on the put it on the little. Uh, cross member here and uh, up front it's, it's touching the, the part that I'm going to weld to and up front here it's about a, a quarter inch quarter inch gap 
but I didn't put the, the washer in here because it has a small hole. I don't know where it went. But anyway, had a smaller hole in the, than the rubber bushing. So that's an eighth inch, and if, if I raise this up, when I put that back in there and raise that up an eighth inch, that'll bring that back and make that pretty much flush. So, so everything is uh, fitting good. So now all I gotta do is uh, mark that hole, then I'm gonna take it out. And when I have it out, uh, we have about a half inch here. No, nah, not even a half inch. At the, the corner here, it's about a quarter. You know, and I could bend them tabs and just weld this outside of the tabs. But uh, I think I'm going to cut that off and uh, move it up and then weld a plate to the back of it. And uh, that'll, uh, that'll work good. So let me get down there and mark that off and then uh, we'll bring it inside, put a hole in there and uh, put a new tab on there. I found that washer. I forgot I brought it in here to measure it. Here's a gauge here. I don't know if you guys can see that, but uh, it's an eighth of an inch. And then I also got this. This is a 14 gauge steel. I'll uh, use this to, to make that backing plate. All right. All right. Got the bushing hole in here, and uh, turn around this way here. I uh, tacked that little extension on. I'll turn it out this way, and now I'll go out there. And uh, we'll put this on the truck, and then uh, we can move it in or out wherever it wants to be. Probably wind up tacking it uh, around here somewhere. And then we'll come in and uh, fill that all in and grind it down, and you'll never notice thing was modified. All right, let's we'll see if the plan works. All right, I got that bracket bolted in place. In the front here, I got it clamped down, and I got the bolt in the, in the bottom there. And uh, I got our piece. Right here, looks like there's a gap here, but you, you fix that with a hammer once it's in, but the, the back end is actually touching the, the side of the truck, so, uh, you know what I'm going to do? I was going to mark it out and everything, but I think I'm just going to drag the welder out here and uh, tack that in place and then bring it inside and uh, weld it up uh, solid. What do, you, what do you think? All right, let's do it. All right, we got that tacked. A lot of work dragging that thing out just for two little tack welds, but uh, that's what you got to do, right? All right. Yeah, I think I came out okay. In fact, once it has paint on and undercoating and stuff like that, you'll never know the difference. Can't even tell now. But uh, it's pretty strong. Got the back and plate there welded up. Not all that pretty, but uh, yeah. Nobody said we're a welder, right? You know, I probably could have avoided that if I, if I put this bolt hole off center, you know. But uh, I'd rather have that in the center than, you know, even, even maybe a half inch off. You know, that would then it would have pivoted at a different place and probably would have closed this gap up. But uh, I'm happy with the way it is. So uh, I think I'm going to call it uh, quits for the day. Road King's not feeling all that good. We got our uh, our second COVID shot yesterday, and my arm is uh, hurting like hell. It feels like uh, I got punched by Joe Frazier. And you know how I know that? Because I got punched by Joe Frazier once. Get time for a short story? I'll tell you. It was way back in the 70s. And I think uh, Frazier might have been the world champ at the time, too. But anyway, uh, I'm not that far from uh, the city, you know, Philadelphia. And I uh, had to go over to this uh, place called Society Hell Apartments. Uh, my buddy uh, had to bring his, his sister was over there. He had to bring her some money or clothes or something. She spent the night or whatever. And uh, we went up and... Uh, Gave her all the stuff she wanted, and then we come down in the elevator. There's a, a black guy next to me, you know. And he's not much taller than me, you know, maybe an inch or so. And, you know, he's stocky. And he has a dog, a German Shepherd next to him. And it's he got real short legs, like a little sawed-off German Shepherd. So he's got a, a German Shepherd in one hand. And in the other hand, he had a, a briefcase handcuffed to his wrist. So uh, I'm looking at him. And uh, he, he sort of looked familiar, you know, and I'm thinking, is that him and him? And me and my buddy, we look at each other, and uh, sort of just, you know, like, uh, is it or not? And so then I say, uh, you know, you look a lot like Joe Frazier. And he just smiles and then punches me in the arm. He don't say yes or no. He just, he smiles and gives me a little punch in the arm. 
So, you know, I was only a kid. I was only about to, in my teens. So after I said that, and, and he didn't answer, and I'm like, yeah, I said, well, are you? <laughs> and then he said, yeah, so that was, uh, it was quite a day. So uh, we're going to call it quits now. And uh, I'm glad you guys are hanging around watching us. I hope I'm not boring you too much. So uh, what do you say, enough of this? All right, I'm going to go rest my arm.